Shalom and thank you for joining me again, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the Most High God, Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, I pray that God will help me to deliver this to you, his word today, because it's a little detailed and I'm going to be swinging back and forth a little from the book, um, uh, my book, The Stone Rejected, to the Bible so you can see how these two stories were merged and why. I told you in a couple of my last videos that I would try to bring this to you because it's important to understand when you're reading Genesis, think about it. Genesis is the foundation of the whole Bible. It sets, um, it sets in a tone for what's happening later on and how God, Yahweh, um, is the creator and what he did. So think about it. Uh, the enemy is trying to go into this part of the Bible to dismantle it, rearrange it, so we won't understand who our enemy really is, which is the dragon, which is Satan. All right, so we're going to start right there. Now, let's get into it. All right, first of all, I'm going to read, like I said, a little to you from my book, just to give you a quick start okay so in the first chapter of the book the stone rejected will be key the key cornerstone um it talks about the fall of an angel of course we know the fall of what we call lucifer he we call him lucifer you know it's the english version he had another name but they call him that because uh, in hebrew it was called light bringer son of the dawn and all of this stuff um, but we're just going to use that name because it's more um, recognizable for most people. All right. There's another name that he had, but we'll use this name. All right. So we're going to read from chapter one uh, in, in the second paragraph. It reads, before Adam, Adama, Atman, or Eve, Ishia, before there was a new earth and heaven, there was an old one. Um, formed on the same foundation, but completely different in scope and content. These were the days of the dinosaurs, a time long before man existed. And over this ancient new earth stood Lucifer, a guardian cherub, given the royal authority of overseeing this original earth. Lucifer was the creative power sent out by God, Yahweh's word, to do his will. In other words, God had created already all the planets, the stars, the sun, the moon, and all of this. And on this new earth um, was Lucifer, the, the one of the highest ranking members of the uh, orderly, heavenly realm. Um, and so he was the governor, you could call him the manager, whatever you want to call him. But this is before humans were ever created. On this earth, this first earth, and when I say first, it doesn't mean like uh, the second one came another whole ball. This is the same earth. It's just the brand new one. The second one will be after God destroys it because of what Lucifer did to the animals. Now, on this first earth, if you read the book, and if you haven't, that's why I'm trying to you know, bring you up to speed on what we're talking about. This first original earth had the dinosaurs. It's true. What scientists says about that, and you know the bones and all this stuff, it's true. There were great, gigantic beasts on the earth. This was God's first creation. And if you read in Genesis, it actually tells you that. Uh, but as I told you before, um, Lucifer, through his little, uh, you know, devious little conceptions using the European Gentiles, he tried to wipe out all of the, um, the proof of his downfall. He was the governor, but he got taken away. And Adam later on, perhaps millions of years later, became this new governor of the earth, the new owner. Okay, so with that being said, I want you to go to Genesis 1, and you'll see where it says, In the beginning, God, Yahweh, created the heavens and the earth. Stop right there. Okay, now what you're going to read next after that is another story merged into that one. Okay, when I said stop, when it says earth and period, now this next sentence should not be there. 
it says, Now the earth was formless and void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the waters. Okay, now, leave that out of your thoughts for a moment, and just go on from there, uh, from Genesis uh, 1, 3, all the way down to Genesis um, 25. That is the complete creation of this first earth. God Yahweh, and I know this is going to be hard for a lot of you traditional uh, believers to understand, that uh, this first earth and what you read from Genesis 1-3 until Genesis 1-25 is the complete uh, creation that God created. Okay. He did not create humans in this first creation. It was the great animals, the great beasts that he created first. All kinds of animals. But they were on a scale and size that was a lot larger than any man would be. Or Think about it. If man lived, that's one thing that some science have right. If man lives during the time of the dinosaurs, these great beasts, they would have been the servants and the beasts would have been the masters because these beasts would have been too big for man to control, um, kill, protect themselves from. So this first earth was a sort of prototype. God Yahweh was first putting these great beasts on here, all kinds, millions of different variations, um, uh, birds, all kind of things, so that he wanted to just start this new earth and this new heaven. Okay, so if you read that, you'll see there's a difference between what follows up after uh, verse 25. What follows after verse 25, um, then it says, God said, let us make man in our image. Now, the problem with this is, if you read from that 1, 3 to 25, you'll see that the last thing God Yahweh made, created, were the animals, the creatures, the large ones. And even talks about the, the uh, great beast of the sea. So all of this stopped right there. And Lucifer was the guardian. Now in the book, my book, and remember I told you, God spoke, Yahweh spoke, and I wrote. And so what he was doing, I see now, from over 25 years ago when I started it, what he, he was doing was he was methodically filling in the blanks of what man, you pin Gentiles, threw Lucifer and the creatures, remember, they're in the, they're in the mix too. Um, they sort of monitor, you know, and, and control things. But in the beginning, he made sure that he took certain things out of the Bible and, and believe me, he's alive. He's not dead somewhere, you know, in a grave somewhere. And the spirit's just running around bothering people. No, Satan is alive and well. He is a great dragon when he's up in the universe. He can cloak himself. Now, I ain't going to never see him unless it's time for him to reveal himself. And what he does is he uses these creatures on the earth who stay in great cities uh, beneath the ocean, like I told you. Um, the Bermuda Triangle is one area. Um, that was the one that YouTube shut me at, down on because I had a video telling the whole truth about where these creatures are and how they are continually being a part of in, um, interfering with mankind. Uh, even the Bible says uh, Satan has deceived the whole world and he has weakened the nations. How has he weakened the nations? He's weakened them through a lot of different variations of ways from uh, religion to uh, physical foods and things that we eat to, you know, as I said in one video, Satan spit. And you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully, if you've seen a couple of videos. So we must understand he did not want to be perceived as the loser. And now he has covered up, taken out, merged different stories. So let me go on and tell you what happened. So after this, um, uh, after this failing that he started killing these animals, molesting them, messing with their DNA, just like uh, the days of Noah later on, many eons later on. But this first earth, he corrupted. He corrupted everything. He corrupted the animals. He was angry because he started feeling like this earth belonged to him. 
And if the earth belonged to him, he should be like a God and be treated like a God. And that was the reason he tried to go up to heaven and make an overthrow because his pride and arrogance got so great that he and the other angels that had went with him uh, tried to make an overthrow in the heavens. But before all this happened, he had corrupted these great gigantic beasts, um, raped them, molested them, loved to see them die, kill in agony, uh, possessed them with his own uh, self, getting inside of animals. That's what we call uh, evil possessions, like demonic possessions. So he did the animals like this first. So God knew he had to destroy this uh, first earth. God, Yahweh hated to do this, but he had no choice. Especially after Satan got so bold that he came up to heaven to try to overthrow heaven. Now remember, this is millions and millions of years ago. This is perhaps even millions of years before Adam was created. So what Yahweh Most High did is he destroyed the earth. Yes, that part scientists tell you is correct. He sent um, a blast so great um, that it destroyed everything. It, it snuffed out life on the earth. Lucifer and his angels had to you know, make a hasty retreat, be the treat, retreat up into the heavens because they no longer had their little base camp on earth. They'd already tried to win that battle, but of course, as you read in the word, Michael and his angels defeated them in heaven. So the next step was for Yahweh to come down and destroy. And you know, he had to hate to have done that, to destroy all of these creatures, all of these animals that he had created, but they were corrupted now. They were um, uh, compromised, so he had no choice. So that is the sequence of events that took place. Now, after this destruction and devastation, there was nothing left on earth. It was just as Genesis, um, uh, that second verse in Genesis says, it was void. It was dark and void because he had pummeled the earth um, with great destruction. It says, now, that's why it says in that First verse, second sentence, it says, now, meaning now, after all this stuff has happened, now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the waters. Because there was nothing left but water, ash, and soot. After God burned it up, blew it all apart, there was nothing left. Um, so, if you stop right there, then you'll understand how that, uh, you, you say this simple, yeah, okay, so that's true. How is it that um, the earth could be void and formless when it said God created light, he created uh, trees, he created plants, he created everything. That makes sense. How could it be now be void and nothing's there? Because God had destroyed it because of what Lucifer had done. Okay. So if you will read it, you will understand the whole concept. And I'm going to try to, because this is a little, you know, complicated, I'm going to try to put that uh, in the description box. I'm going to give you the verses that help you read it in the right order. Instead of reading this, two things merged together. It also covers in the book how that um, God, Yahweh, created Adam and Eve when there was nothing, no trees, no anything. So wait a minute. Didn't we just read on the... Uh, to cre the creation story from Genesis uh, 1 all the way down that he created all these things. How is it that when he's creating Adam uh, that there's nothing? It says before there was a tree, before there was any water, before there was anything, God created Adam. Well, that's because God was starting over. Like a great artist, um, like I said, after his grief and sorrow of having to destroy all of his creation, all of those animals, he later started with humans, and so there was nothing there. There was no trees. There was no, you know, plants. There was nothing. Wasn't even any mist or any water on the ground. He, he was starting all over again. So if you can sort of stay up with me, you'll understand how Satan had uh, the European Gentiles to merge these stories because he didn't want, and he didn't want us knowing who and what really started the whole ball of trouble rolling. All right, so now, now we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back and we're gonna, um, 
we're going to read a little about how he looked and what he looked like because we have been taught like little children that a uh, little fairy tales that in the garden you know satan you know did all of these things but he was just a little snake and and he just came up and talked to eve like a little snake hanging in the tree first of all that doesn't make sense anyway because if he was already a snake how did he get cursed into crawling on the ground snakes crawl on the ground you see how sometimes if we stop and uh just let that Holy Spirit speak to us. It will clear out a lot of garbage that the enemy uh, through the European Gentiles and the creatures have taught us, uh, taught us error. And, and the, another reason they do this is because it makes it easier to control us. If we know who our true enemy is and we know what he's up to and we know his past, we'll know how to handle him in the future, right? He knows how to handle us. He knows how to handle our emotions as humans. He knows so much about us because he's watched us for thousands of years. But if we know, then we have the power, right? With the Yahweh Most High. Now, so we're going to come here and um, we're going to start back talking about him a little bit because you got to understand who you're doing this. Is. Now, in uh, still in the same chapter the following angel we go on down and it's about two or three pages over it says now let's get back to lucifer he was one of the angels who unfortunately focused too much on self god took great pleasure in creating glorious new creations in the heavens just as he had done on earth so when yahweh prepared a body for lucifer it was to be a one-of-a-kind masterpiece an angel of unparalleled beauty beauty and splendor Lucifer was made colorless or white. The hairs of his head were also white or blonde. Lucifer was also endowed with great wisdom and glory, which surrounded his body in the form of light. His piercing, almost colorless, sapphire blue eyes and glowing skin radiated light everywhere. To add to this spectacular show of light, precious gemstones were embedded directly into his skin, with each stone casting a fantastic prism of color so in this creature was found light reflecting upon light and the light again reflected upon itself like mirrors the gemstones reproduced the reflection of light several times over creating an intensity of light that could only be compared to the glory of the sun so much so that lucifer was called light bringer morning star and son of the dawn Okay, so I wanted to read you that so that you could understand that what Eve saw. Oh, well, let's back up just a little bit. Um, after all of this destruction and perhaps as Yahweh revealed to me in the book, that perhaps millions of years passed. Time, a lot of time passed before God, Yahweh. Because you have to understand, this angel was a son. Even the Bible calls the angels the sons of God. And so his son betrayed him. And if you notice in the Bible, God Yahweh weaves this story throughout the Bible in humans. Think about David and how his son betrayed him. And how uh, Cain betrayed uh, Adam and Eve. He didn't purposely do that. God Yahweh didn't do that. But this dark force weaves its way throughout uh, the Bible and it, it reflects on how and what happened and how God's deep sorrow and hurt was produced by Satan uh, because of what he did um, and then to make matters worse he, he worse he comes back and he undermines again but see Yahweh had everything planned out on the second attempt to destroy earth uh, and Adam and Eve uh, because he had already as the word tells you, he had already prepared a savior before what before the earth was before this second earth was because he knew lucifer would try to come back again and do the same thing undermine earth destroy it rob it of its uh new owners so i told you how he looks because you got to understand what approached eve in the garden of eden was an angelic man a, a beautiful, glorious-looking, angelic man. And the first mistake she made was the mistake we all make here, even in our modern times. We listen. We look first, and then we listen. When she saw this angelic man, when she was alone, 
you know, strolled far away from Adam, she saw this glorious angelic angel, what I just described. And remember the word said he comes as an angel of light. So when she saw him, this, this beauty just transfixed her. And then he began to talk to her. It wasn't a snake. It was an angel with the heart of a dragon, a prime evil serpent, something so evil and mean. Um, and God knew that he would try to do what he did again. So what she saw was this angel and she's looking at him and she's enamored by him and she's fixated on how this bright, beautiful, glorious angel is standing before her. And then he begins to talk. She's mesmerized. But like us, she should have clung to what God had commanded her. Don't touch the tree. Don't touch it. Don't eat from it. If she'd have kept that in her mind, she wouldn't have been subdued by him and his beauty and the words that he was speaking in her ear. We're sort of like that with European Gentiles. I'm just going to keep it real. We're, the whole world has been uh, compromised, corrupted, because they stopped, they looked, they listened to the European Gentiles who are descendants of Cain, who was the son of Lucifer. And so let's go back now to Adam, I mean, and Eve and what happened in the garden. So when she listened to this, this being, of course, these conversations with Lucifer and Eve happened a couple of times. It just wasn't once because, you know, he knows how to talk to you and keep talking to you, sort of like a man talking to a woman. And, and he kept talking to her when she was alone and Adam's working in the garden and tending to the animals. And maybe she felt a little lonely. And then when he came up and talked to her, she was fair game for his lies, his little trick, his ruse. And so uh, he convinces her to take this fruit. And once she takes it, as, as the most high spoke in the, in the book, uh, it was like a drug. It made her just relax. It made her, you know, not, not resistant to what he was saying any longer. And then right there in the garden, uh, he has sexual relationships with Eve, which later produces Cain. Now, Cain came looking just like his father. Uh, light eyes, blue, uh, skin white, and these two, you know, father and mother, uh, Adam and Eve, didn't know what to make of this child, but they felt like this is our child. They were innocent in that way. She, she knew, I believe Eve knew, and uh, at the same time though, time goes on and, and the family just has to endure. So I'm going to stop at that point because I want you to understand more about what, what is going on today and how uh, we have to understand how we'll be manipulated. Because history is good. It's very good to understand certain things that's happened in the past. But if we don't connect it with what's going on now, it'll just be an interesting story. Because what goes on in the past happens in the present, right? Okay, so we again are being corrupted. Our species are being corrupted uh, on a, ba a, a daily basis by these creatures, by Lucifer, by those he's using to, you know, monitor. Even the Bible tells you about the watchers, how they watch humans, how to cause them to fall, how to cause them to fall into sin. So we must understand, now this thing is tightly interwoven in our human existence. You know how? Okay. You might want to check this. Go read back in the 80s how um, uh, Reagan, when President Reagan was in office, and this was during the Cold War, but they were still having, you know, meetings. Gorbachev, who was the president of Russia at that time, were having meetings. And one of these meetings, uh, President Reagan takes a little moment out and asks Gorbachev, hey, basically, uh, if we have like an invasion from outer space, would you guys actually help us? Could we put that Cold War aside and you guys actually help us? And Gorbachev sort of laughs and said, well, sure, of course we would. I don't think Gorbachev had a clear understanding of what Reagan was referring to. You have to understand, this was the 80s. From the 60s on up through the 70s and 80s, our nation was making collusion with the creatures. 
And at the beginning, it was a, like I said, a symbiotic relationship where each one was helping each give a little technical knowledge to one. The other one, our government was giving them free access to come and go and, you know, take, you know, uh, sperm and cells and different things, you know, as if they're making acts, they want to actually help, you know, humanity or whatever, all those lies, not true. But as this thing marched on, it got dangerous because these creatures became the masters and those at the top of the government became the slaves. And now they're so interwoven into our government and our power house. Uh, ruling masses that you can't tell one from the other and I tell you another thing um, these beings now some of them don't even realize they are not human they have been so much a part of the creation but uh, they still can be used because they don't have that uh, benevolent spirit they have that malevolent evil spirit and that's why you wonder how is it that we can go within three or four years of people hiding out and saying, you know, they gay, closet gays, to forcing you by law to respect and honor them. That's because those at the top are actually, a lot of them, hybrids. They are creatures um, posing as humans, ruling at the very top, and orchestrating what they put upon us. And there's a reason for that. That's so that we pose the least resistance. As I did one of my last videos, I talked to you about the Hopi prophecy. I didn't get to speak on this point though. In one part of the Hopi prophecy, it says that, um, it says that, now remember this Hopi prophecy was from thousands of years ago. It says that in our time, at the time of purifying of the earth, meaning bringing destruction, that men would rise up and say, I'm smarter than God, so I'm going to be a woman. And women would say, I'm smarter than God, so I'm going to be a man. And so really what was happening here is these creatures were interwoving, interweaving themselves into human society, putting in this, this evil inclination of uh, sexual perversion, and, you know, people go to bars and say, hey, one night stand, one night stand. A lot of times they're having a one night stand with a creature and don't realize it. Producing these hybrid children who have no benevolent spirit, who do not have this connection with the, with the creation, the creator. They have only an earthly, lustful um, passion to go forth and produce more evil, more darkness. And that was the whole plan of Satan. He can only arise with the Antichrist once he clears a space for him where there's all darkness. And America is coming to that, that, that precipice right now. They're at that edge where the whole nation is becoming pitch black. And that's why all these crazy things are happening. Didn't you notice that out of all the countries that COVID came into, um, the very one that supposedly had all the answers is the one that is pitch black. So many people died. It's because, um, one, I believe, um, as the word says, um, you must rely on God. Some people passed away because they didn't trust the Most High God, Yahweh. Some um, God took purposely because a lot of the elders, he took purposely because he didn't want them getting corrupted. He didn't want them after years of this struggle and fighting the enemy and trying to serve God to be corrupted at the end, this end game situation. But for those of us who are still here, we've got to learn who we're dealing with and how to fight. And just like I just said, there's a lot of people who are walking around who look like they're humans, but they are corrupted beings. And their job is to corrupt more of humankind, corrupt that, that bloodline, um, so that it will be easier when the Antichrist arises for them to just take over, take over the earth. Uh, and basically that, that main you know, headquarters is going to be America. I'm sad to tell you, but darkness is just about, it's almost like baking a cake. It's almost just ready. It's only a little light still left in America. Because you have to understand, Satan took over the, rel the religious aspect of it that would have held darkness back. Light uh, can't be overtaken by darkness unless light gets out of the way. 
and our religious leaders have been corrupted or else they wouldn't let homosexuality rule and run in their church. You got, you know, you singers, you got your, you got your music ministers, you got pastors who are, you know, homosexuals. All of these things set up a, a foundation for the emergence of the Antichrist. He just can't come in. He just can't come in in life. It has to be prepared for his arrival. And so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to put this in, you know, below in the video for you to understand how Genesis has been merged, some parts taken out, two stories merged into one, so you can understand who's really running this diabolical mission to uh, rule, master, and destroy the ones of light, and put forth this darkness so the Antichrist can rise and try to raise an army uh, in preparation to fight against God, Yahweh, and Yeshua HaMashiach himself. Of course, we know through revelations he's not going to win. But you got to understand, there's going to be a lot of casualties. And if we don't understand how to stand against this darkness and this force and where to get to, to get out of the way, because it's going to happen. It's going to happen, uh, but we need to understand how to protect ourselves and our family. So I thank you once again. Didn't mean to go too long, but I'm going to try to have a following one to sort of give you more on this so you can understand what's going on. Thank you so much. May you be blessed.